Hello everyone. Today we are going to quickly go over the 50 nodes in KTT, my Houdini terrain generation tool set. You can pick up KTT from the Gumroad link in the description, and I hope you'll enjoy. We're going to get started with the KTT handbook. The handbook contains the documentation for the tool set, which can help you get started with the tool set as well as it gives you some examples for different things you can do. Um, such as creating this quick island that you can see here. It's pretty neat. But it also contains examples and information about each node in the toolset. You can see them all here. So for instance, if I want to create an example with the smooth fluvial erosion, this is very easy. You can just click a button. And this works for every node in the toolset. So all of these guys have examples built into the handbook. The crater node indents a basic crater bowl into the terrain. It can also be used to create a crater field, which looks pretty sweet. The Gabor node creates a wavy pattern on the terrain. You can give it some directionality. You can also mess with the phase to make it look like it's moving a little bit. And you can also turn it into a fractal. Pretty neat little node, has some fairly interesting niche use cases. The gradient node applies a gradient onto the terrain. The gradient can either be linear, circular, or radial, and you can apply it to any field that you'd like. The mountain node creates a mound of noise in the middle of the train. It's very handy for starting off your projects and you'll find yourself using it quite a bit. The cliff synthesizer node procedurally grows rocky details onto the steep bits of your terrain, getting more and more detail the longer you let it run. The cracks node embeds cracks into your terrain. The detail transfer node embeds the details of one height field onto another. The displacement node displaces the terrain based off of a texture. The flatten by proximity node flattens the terrain anywhere it's near a spline. The layered displacement node creates an almost sandstone-like effect on the input terrain. The recurve node blurs the terrain in a fashion that either isolates the ridges or the channels in the terrain. The smooth tailless node mimics how some sediment will very precisely shear off the terrain like snow, so it creates these very precise mathematical slopes, which can be useful for modeling certain types of material. The terrace node creates strata on the terrain, it can also just be used as a general detailing node as it creates interesting cliff details. The draw features node allows you to draw certain features such as ridges or channels onto the terrain, as well as create either raised or depressed regions. The stamp node allows you to place copies of other height fields onto your terrain to create interesting layouts and such. The dunes node simulates dunes on top of the input terrain. The flow lines node creates a map of all of the areas of high water flow on the terrain, such as these channels here. The fluvial advection node advects a field on your terrain in accordance with the rules of fluvial erosion. So you can see how it takes this input mask here and it gives it a much more eroded look, how some of these areas are clearly being carried down the slopes. The fluvial erosion node creates this kind of mountainous erosion effect with these rather sharp ridges and channels. Here's what the input terrain looks like and eroded. The lakes node creates flat basins of water on the terrain. The meandering rivers node creates a meandering river effect from a simple input spline. The river network node creates a network of rivers that feed into the water bodies on the terrain, represented by this massive red spot right here. The screen node scatters pebbles on the terrain and then rolls them downhill so you get a rather realistic rock distribution on your terrain. The smooth fluvial erosion node is a very versatile erosion solver. It's very powerful, it's very controllable, probably one of the most interesting nodes in the toolset. The snow base node can be used to create a basic distribution of snow on your terrain. 
The thermal erosion node creates a thin layer of sediment on the terrain that can be shaped to your liking and can have some pretty neat little surface details on it. The apply texture node applies an image texture to the terrain. The color by gradient node colors the terrain by a gradient that you define in the node and it sources the mapping on that gradient from an input field such as the mask in this case. The color curves node applies a curves operation to the colors of the terrain. The color distort node distorts the colors by a noise texture. The texture detail transfer is very much like the regular detail transfer, except it transfers the details from one texture onto another. The tint node is a powerful layer-based color adjustment node that allows you to stack multiple color effects onto the colors of your terrain. The adjust node applies simple effects to your terrain, such as adjusting the gamma or applying a clamp to the values of the terrain. The cacher node will cache the data on the terrain so that it's not affected by upstream changes. The clear color node will clear any color fields from your terrain, reverting it back to its default gray color. The combine node will combine two input terrains based off of some mathematical operations such as either blending between them or applying something like a max or a min operation. The create color fields node will create the R, G, and B fields that we need to use for coloring. We can see this if we go into the node info panel, we can see three CD fields. These are our color fields. Um, on previous nodes, they're only the height and the mask field. And this also allows us to apply a very basic coloring effect to our terrain if we want. The flatten borders node will flatten the borders of the terrain. The hydrologic conditioning node creates paths for water to exit the terrain. For instance, in this input terrain here, we can see that this area right here is a ditch. But in the hydrologic conditioning node, we can see that this has created a channel for the water to exit the terrain. And other ditches, such as this one right here, also have channels that are created from them that allow the water to flow down and out of the terrain. The Make Seamless node uses a simple algorithm to blend the edges of the terrain so that they can tile seamlessly. The Mask by Color node allows you to select a certain color on your terrain that you want to output to your mask. The Scatter node scatters meshes across your terrain and it gives you some control over their orientation and such. The shadow map node creates a shadow map for the terrain based off of a sun direction. The shortest path node takes a network of points connected by lines and computes the most optimal path between those points with respect to the geometry of the terrain. The transform node transforms the features on the height field without actually transforming the height field itself. The path trace light map node creates a path trace light map for the train. For instance, you can see the uh, bounce light from this wall onto this wall right here. So it's a very good node for previewing your terrain in accurate lighting while still maintaining the viewport interactivity. The shade viewport node is a much simpler version of the path trace light map node. It's not as high fidelity, but it's a lot faster to compute. So it's very quick to change like the sun angle and such. The mesher node creates an adaptive grid mesh from your height field. It preserves details from the input terrain while being much more optimized than a regular grid mesh. The output node exports your height field as an image texture. I don't have time to go into all the details of what makes this specific node cool, but it's got some cool features that aren't present in the regular height field output node, as well as it's a lot faster. All right, so that's all of them. Thank you very much for watching. I know you didn't get into too much detail, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of the breadth of the tool set. Um, as a reminder, the link to get KTT is in the description below. Um, yeah, 
Uh, there's also a link to our Discord for KTT if you want to ask any questions or see what other people are doing with it. Um, plenty of cool stuff going on there. Anyways, thank you very much. Uh, a like or a subscribe would also be very much appreciated. And have a good day. Bye.